Hey guys, Buddhism can be quite difficult to understand. The ancient Pali language and the old culture really don't make it easy. Today, I will try to explain pretty much all important concepts and ideas in Buddhism using a, yes, that is right, a Super Mario simile. Pretty much everyone knows that game nowadays, and it is surprisingly suitable and relatable as an example. But without further ado, let us begin. But first, a big thank you to my meditation Discord. The people there really came up with the uh, with the simile, and I just refined it to represent all the concepts. The initial idea of the simile is not from me. Anyway, let us now begin with the term samsara, that describes the human condition from a Buddhist perspective. Samsara describes the entire human experience over many lives in different realms of existence, or levels, <laughs> as you could call it in Super Mario language. And to stay with the Super Mario metaphor, you can think of Samsara as the entire video game from start to finish until you beat it, which is very important to understand. And once you start it, you cannot stop until you beat the game and escaped the entire cycle of birth, rebirth, death, and uh, so on. And when you die, you always have to restart, if you want to or not. However, every time you respawn, you lose all your past memories and will be convinced that you only have one life or a fixed number of lives left. You could further compare the entire samsara thing with having the Alzheimer disease. It is only really attractive to be reborn over and over again because you think you can fix past mistakes and do things better next time. However, you cannot even remember them, in most cases, from a Buddhist perspective. And once you are born in there, or spawned, you have literally no clue what is going on and have to relearn everything you learn now again and have to go through the same struggles over and over again. It might be interesting for one, two, three, ten times, but not a million, a thousand or an eternity, pretty much. And you have to pretty much learn even the controls as a baby and uh, then the laws of the game in school and later university and in the school of life, pretty much. Further, there will be all kinds of hindrances that make you lose sight of the final goal, so you completely forget what this is all about. There will be Goombas or Hatred, Coopers or Lust, and many other dangerous encounters that force you to restart the game again and again and again, and every time from a very early on point, so you don't really have a a safe file. <laughs> you always have to start from the beginning. And even worse, there will be all kinds of side quests or objectives that just distract you uh, from the main goal. As an example, you might just want to collect as many points or coins as possible. That would be wrong understanding of wrong view, as the Buddha called it. And whenever you are close to making it, there is Mario, the uh, Mara, the evil one, or Bowser, waiting for you, so you have to restart as a final boss. This is the end boss of Samsara, who always tries to bring you back to the, to the initial part of the game and to keep you into or locked in the cycle of eternal rebirth and, and death. And then there is the concept of merit, or making merit in Buddhist countries, or doing virtuous deeds to get future rewards. Uh, that's what a lot of Buddhists uh, do, and it is akin to just looking for points or jumping mindlessly over enemies while having lost sight of the real goal. You just jump over, <laughs> over Goombas or on top of turtles for the sake of it. You have no idea anymore why you do it. That is wrong view. If you had right view, you would jump over those turtles or onto those Goombas for the very reason uh, to reach the final goal. That would be right view. And virtue or merit alone uh, is like collecting as many points as possible. It is surely a good and beneficial thing, but much better than doing something else uh, would be uh, to just finish the game as it was meant to be, to escape samsara, the cycle of rebirth and death. And merit alone won't help you to escape the game. It does weaken craving. But it uh, never really uproots it, as it uh, sidetracks the ultimate goal. It will get you further ahead. You will get some levels done, but there is a cap for how far you can make it by just collecting merit, by just making good karma. After all, no matter how often you kill all the enemies or weaken the hindrances, uh, in Buddhist terms, they always respawn endlessly. There is no end to it until you escape the entire game, until you beat the game. Then there are no more new enemies, then there is no more renewed suffering. And the three marks of existence are another very important concept in Buddhism, are a bit harder to understand. 
they are non-self or uncontrollability or masterlessness, suffering or unease, non-peacefulness, and impermanence or unownability. And usually we cannot see these remarks as our minds are affected by delusion, lust and hatred. And uh, whenever we are about to see them, there's always a distraction or some instant gratification that pops up and we get tunnel vision and can only see what is directly in front of us or on the screen in the Mario side-scroller metaphor. Just the tiny part of the screen is visible to us. Nothing else is uh, accessible to us unless we have a bit of distance or virtue going and are less absorbed. We can also remember what lies back in the past or awaits us in the future if we are less uh, absorbed in the content. We might even see the game interface and counters at the top very clearly. That is what mindfulness is like. We suddenly gain access to a lot of peripheral knowledge that wasn't there before. And only uh, when we are mindful enough can we gain knowledge about the end goal of the game and see how many other things are just distractions. That is wisdom, pretty much, that you understand what you have to do to beat the game. And it is the same in Buddhism. <laughs> you have to gain the right understanding, the right view, which is also called the first stage of awakening, and then you can start beating the game. And we will now go through the three marks in succession. Remember, we can only see them when we are very mindful and very non-reactive, so we don't get absorbed in instant gratification all the time. And non-self means that we imagine that we are Mario himself and very absorbed in what is happening. Mario thinks that he has control, while in reality he is remote controlled by you when you are playing the game, by something external, by us, that he can never fully know. It is not uh, in his domain. His two-dimensional knowledge does not pertain to our three-dimensional reality. And Mario's brain rationalizes all the time and is greatly occupied by filtering away the fact that he has no control at all and that everything is just happening from his perspective. This is what non-self is like, an insight into non-self. And a lot of our experience is just happening. And our brains make us believe that we are doing it, when in reality, I don't know, when we pick up a cup, we just want to pick up the cup and do not specify all the hundreds of muscle movement, movements that are necessary. And yet our brain acts like we have control at all the time. In reality, we just want to pick up the cup and then it happens. <laughs> and our brain filters away the rest. And now we come to the second mark of existence, namely impermanence, unownability due to impermanence, or anicca. This one can be compared to a side-scroller level in Super Mario. Before Mario, lots of options to move in certain ways arise, and behind him many other options vanish all the time, according to the laws of the game. None of the levels can be truly owned by Mario. He can surely grab a, a mushroom or something or destroy a block, but soon it's gone and it's kind of meaningless. And uh, they change all the time, the levels, so he cannot really own them. And the simple fact that the side-scroller side -scroll started also already implies that it will end at some point. That is the nature of the game and also the nature of reality itself. Birth means death with certainty. And in the end, we all lose all our power-ups and cannot use them anymore. This is the truth of impermanence. And the last mark of existence is the most popular one, but also probably the most misunderstood one. Suffering or dukkha, which I also like to call unease or non-peacefulness. And this one relates to our feelings and how they force us to behave in a certain way. As we already learned, Mario has no real control and he can only do what the external conditions allow him to do, namely we the controller make him do. And you could compare emotions with power-ups. When they are there, Mario can jump higher and throw fireballs, but he doesn't really have to. Nonetheless, the presence of them already, already pressures him to do so. Mario is driven to behave in a certain way all the time because cravings and emotions pressure him deep down. Mario knows that everything will cease to exist and that he has no control and that is very uncomfortable. That you are forced to do things. When emotions are bad, you are pretty much forced to seek out uh, behaviors or do things that make you feel better. If you feel down or blue, you are pretty much forced by your mind to, I don't know, play video games, watch pornography, binge watch series or eat ice cream to make you feel better. But it's not working all the time. Imagine one of your relatives died and now uh, eating ice cream won't fix it anymore. Uh, you have no control over the feeling. The feeling just 
uh, lures you into believing that you have control over it, <laughs> that you can change it all the time by changing the external circumstances a little bit. But that's not true. It's like uh, driving a car and nine out of ten times the car does what you want and when you turn the wheel right it will turn right but one of the time uh, it will turn left upon uh, turning the wheel right. And that's not real control, <laughs> that's just being subject to cosmic luck pretty much. And the first stage of awakening, or right view, means that Mario understands all of this. He got a very good, uh, got a very good idea of how the game uh, he is trapped in really works, and what he must do to escape the cycle of always respawning again and again. He realizes that everything must vanish, that he has no control, and that he suffers greatly on account of all of it. And the game is only fun when you think you have a choice, and that it is rare and special and an opportunity. If you have to do it billions upon billions of times, then it loses its charm. It stops being fun when uh, you regard it as a prison, prison that you cannot escape. And once you know all of this, it is impossible to unknow it. Now it is just a matter of time to beat the game. A maximum of seven more lives are necessary according to the Buddha. And upon realizing all of this, Mario experiences disenchantment and dispassion with the game. Things he was previously hyped about, like a fire flower, <laughs> won't enchant him anymore, won't trap him in the game anymore. He realizes that the urge to grab fire flowers only makes the painful craving to get it stop for, for a very short time, but it won't get rid of the craving forever. It will become even stronger in the future if he grabs the fire flower. Mario won't fall for the trap anymore, and as a result, he will experience true bliss and ease and freedom from debt, as he is not pressured to do things anymore. He doesn't have to do anything, and things are fine the way they are. He stops resisting reality and no longer tries to make it more like this or like that to be a bit more enjoyable. Instead, he is fine with whatever the external circumstances provide him with. And full enlightenment or liberation is like reaching the end of the game. Mario is no longer reborn into it and no longer has to experience the constant pressure of his feelings and all the suffering that comes with playing the game, the constant dying, the losing of one, uh, what one has gained, etc., and the constant loss of his memory. He is now free from it, liberated from it, and can no longer suffer. Everything else looks more or less the same from the outside, but the inside has completely changed. For him, nothing is like before, and he experienced the most sublime form of happiness that can ever exist. And this is pretty much it. <laughs> Let us now come to the most important point. Buddhism, or the Dhamma as the Buddha called it, is hard to understand and subtle to see, and most people can't understand it as the language is rather old and the similes come from another culture. But we can modernize them by using elements from our culture <laughs> that are also kind of relatable. And all the things the Buddha talked about can be directly experienced if you follow his instructions, and there are many rewards along the way. And video games are a surprisingly good way of explaining all of this, especially Super Mario. Anyways, this is pretty much it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy what I do, feel free to like and subscribe. But until then, I wish you a pleasant day and goodbye.